Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a ton of new improvements to RPC S3, many of which have improved the performance, stability and all around usability of many of the most popular PlayStation 3 titles on this awesome emulator. Now throughout the last few videos on which I covered RPC S3, I asked you guys what games you would like to see me cover in respect to compatibility on the emulator and for the most part, I was able to get my hands on and dump from my PS3 many of the most popular titles requested by you. Just a few of the games we're going to be taking a look at include God of War 3, Motorstorm, Pacific Rift, the Ratchet & Clank series, Red Dead Redemption, Skate 3, The Last of Us, the Uncharted series, Killzone 3 and Metal Gear Solid 4. Much of the focus of this video is going to be centered around optimizations given near the end of December last year and the start of January this year. While much of the performance improvement has come from just general emulator optimization, there are in fact two settings that were added recently that help a lot with emulator stability and performance. The first of which is called Relaxed Zcal Sync, you'll find this in the advanced tab of the emulator, and the second is called Driver Wake Up Delay. Now we're going to take a look at a driver wake up in just a few minutes, but first let's take a look at some of the performance increases you can see by using the relaxed Zcal sync. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at Red Dead Redemption. On the left side of our screen, you can see we have Zcal disabled, on the right we have it turned on, and by the performance numbers you can see in the top of the screen, Red Dead Redemption is between 3 to 7 frames per second higher consistently when using this new relaxed Zcal sync. Now, while not many games can take advantage of this new setting, there are still quite a few that can. Yet another great example of a game that can is Motorstorm Pacific Rift. As with Red Dead Redemption, this game also gets a substantial performance boost when using Zcal relaxed. The gameplay you're watching now is of the game running at 4K on my own system, and hopefully with these performance improvements, this title is going to be much more playable for many, many other people on the emulator. Next up, we're going to take a look at God of War 3. This game, thanks to the MLAA removal patch, has seen a dramatic boost in performance, and when paired with general optimizations to the emulator, this game is a much, much more playable state. This MLAA SPU patching has been enabled thanks to a new PR by WhatCookie, and if you want to check it out, I'll link both it and my patch.yml for patching these different games in the description of this video. If you struggle for performance and want just a little bit more in this game, I would definitely recommend giving it a look. Staying on the topic of MLAA patches, performance improvements and general increases in stability on the emulator, The Last of Us has seen a pretty substantial improvement in all of these fields over the past month. Thanks to the new MLAA patch, the general optimizations to the emulator and the utilization of the new driver wake up delay setting, The Last of Us is now far more playable than it has ever been before. Now, with performance varying anywhere between around 15 to 40 frames per second even on a very very high end desktop PC, this game can still unfortunately not be considered anywhere near playable. Metal Gear Solid 4 is our next port of call and again thanks to the introduction of relaxed Z Call Sync, Metal Gear 4 has seen a substantial improvement in performance. While frame rates have indeed gone up, the stability of this game on RPCS3's master versions is around the same as it was before meaning that if you want any kind of a playable or a usable experience in this title, you are still going to have to use the custom pedals which I previously showcased on the channel. Any and all of these improvements to master have already been merged there, so if you want to see how Metal Gear Solid 4 runs on your PC, I will leave a link to those builds down in the description of this video. Killzone 3 is our next port of call, and to be honest, I was kind of blown away when I booted this game up for the very first time. I only just recently acquired this game off of eBay, I think I got it for $4.99, and I was super super surprised by not only how well it was rendering, but also how well it was running on RPC S3. As with The Last of Us and many other demanding titles on this emulator, it does occasionally drop down to around 14 or 15 frames per second, and as with most alpha emulators, it still is exhibiting a few graphical bugs here and there. Regardless, it's still a pretty enjoyable experience, and to be honest, 
Having never played this game before, I'm really excited to see it improve in future so that I can finally fully play through it on the emulator. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction. In the future series, this is by far my favourite game, and as you can see, it has seen a significant performance increase on the latest RPCS3 master builds. Again, thanks to another update to the emulator, this game can also now be correctly resolution scaled, so all the gameplay footage you are watching is running at 4K. Now, even though we have seen a substantial increase in performance, Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction still cannot be considered playable due to some unsurmountable collision issues that take place on its third planet. Regardless, it's still really, really impressive to see these performance improvements. Hopefully, they can fix those collision issues in future. For now, let's move on to our next game for compatibility testing, Skate 3. Thanks to more general optimizations to the emulator, Skate 3 has become even more performant, reliable, and as should be fairly apparent by the gameplay you're watching, this has allowed Skate 3 to become playable at and above frame rates of 100 frames per second on very high-end systems. This performance change also translates very well over to lower-end systems, delivering a much more playable experience in this awesome skateboarding title. And last but not least, we're going to be taking a look at Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, a game that has seen a huge jump in both graphical render quality and performance since last I took a look at it on the channel. I believe the last time I actually played this game on RPCS3, it was a pretty horrendous flickering black mess with practically nothing rendered, and when comparing that to what we're seeing in gameplay now, it's pretty damn impressive and when paired with all of the other optimizations and improvements we've seen throughout this video, 2020 is shaping up to be a fantastic year for PlayStation 3 emulation. Those are all the games that I was able to test for this compatibility video, though if there are any additional titles you would like to see me test out, please do let me know down below in the comments. In relation to any of the settings used in any of these titles, down below you will find a download link to all of my config files for any of the games shown, and as always, if you find any settings that can further improve any of these titles, please don't be afraid to contact me either here on YouTube or over on my Discord server. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you found it as interesting to watch as I found it to make. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please consider subscribing to my channel, and if you're already subscribed, please hit the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as I make any new video uploads. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, have a great day, and I will see you all in the next one.